SteamOS 3.5 is finally here. I know that I've said this before. Back in March, I told you that SteamOS 3.5 was right around the corner, but then Valve took their time and really put a lot of work into this particular update. Now, why would this update take them so long when everything that we've had before SteamOS 3.5 has been update after update after update? Well, you see, this is the first time that we're, that Valve is switching to a new Linux kernel, which brings with it a whole bunch of new stuff, which is very, very exciting. And I know that I've said it before, but it's right around the corner for real this time. Trust me, we've got tweets from Valve themselves. They said, hello, we've just shipped SteamOS 3.5 to the preview channel of Steam Deck. This update has a ton of changes, including improvements to the default color rendering on the Steam Deck, new display color settings, auto-mounted external drives, and a slew of other improvements and fixes. If you want to help test this update and provide feedback, you can opt into the preview channel via settings, system, on your Steam Deck and you can find the full patch notes here. Now you might be wondering, what are they talking about? What is the preview channel? Well, I think that they're accidentally using some old language because back when the Steam Deck first came out, they had three channels. They had the stable channel, the beta channel, and the preview channel. Well, these days we're up to five different channels. If you look at your Steam Deck and you have dev mode turned on, you would see the stable channel, the release candidate channel, the beta channel, the beta candidate channel, and the main channel. None of those are called the preview channel. So which channel is the preview channel? That would be the beta candidate channel. So I'm gonna update my Steam Deck to the beta candidate channel. I'll show you what the differences are, and then we're gonna uh, look at the patch notes and see what jumps out at us. If we look at my Steam Deck here and I press the Steam button, I'm gonna come down to the settings, and then I'm gonna go over to systems, and you can see that currently I am sitting on 3.4.10. I just took my Steam Deck from uh, 3.6, which if you're wondering, how, what do you mean 3.6? Go back and watch my video from uh, yesterday. Um, but I took it back from 3.6 and downgraded it to 3.4.10 so that you all could see what it's like to go from 3.4.10, which is the current stable release, up to 3.5. So I'm going to head up here and um, usually... When they say the preview build, this is where you would see the preview build, but we don't see the preview build in there anymore. So I'm gonna need to go through and check if it's the release candidate, beta, beta candidate, or main. Well, I know that it's not main because 3.6 is on main, uh, but let's check out beta candidate, which I think is what they're talking about for preview. And there we go, it is under that. So now I've selected, um, the beta candidate and now all I have to do is hit apply and it's going to apply and through the magic of video editing we're going to be able to check this out right away by the way I don't have a sponsor on this episode but if you want to support the channel and I mention any gadgets during the show then keep in mind that they will be linked in the description down below and once it is installed you then have this restart button right there so I'm going to go ahead and click on restart it's going to go through its uh, little reboot and it'll take a couple of minutes and when it comes back up, we'll actually be able to look at some of this new stuff. So now it's installing the new update and while it does that, I thought I would point out the fact that I've got this awesome clear shell from JSOX. They did provide this to me uh, for free, but they are not paying for this video, but I figured a lot of people are probably seeing this and wondering which one it is. It's the JSOX one. It was a nightmare to put on, it took me seven hours. I did it as a live stream, the whole thing from start to finish, but I think it turned out really, really well. And so I just wanted to point that out to everybody. All right, we are now booted up. Now, one of the things that we need to talk about in uh, this new operating system is the screen, which we'll get to that in just a second. First, I just wanna confirm that I'm actually on the new system. And if we come down here, we can see that we're on SteamOS 3.5. So now that we can confirm that, one thing that is in the patch notes, in fact, they kind of start with this, 
is the display. Here's what they have to say. The default color rendering for the Steam Deck has been adjusted in order to emulate the sRGB color gamut, resulting in a slightly warmer and more vibrant color appearance. So we now have the before and after, and I'm gonna put those on screen right now so that we can see how they look different. If you're curious about what camera I'm shooting this with, this is the Sony a6400 is my top down shot. It's got a Sigma. Uh, f1.4 16 millimeter lens and it is currently white balanced at 5500 kelvin now if none of that means anything to you that's perfectly fine but i just wanted to let people know what camera and lens is looking at these things so you can understand what the colors look like before and after if there's even a change at all i don't get to see that until after the actual video is done and i'm looking at them side by side so I'm not sure if it looks slightly warmer or not. Now they've also added in a new setting underneath the display configuration. If you go into your settings and then down to display, you have this new button right here, adjust display colors. And they have a few different things that you are able to change with these two sliders here. Number one, on the left-hand side, you can change the color vibrance. The color vibrance is in three categories. We have native, sRGB, and boosted. Native is the color appearance for the Steam Deck that was prior to this update. So basically, what did it look like before they did this update? Then we have sRGB. sRGB basically emulates the sRGB primaries without going so far as to clipping any of the colors. And what do I mean by clipping? I want you to just imagine a graph, like a piece of paper, uh, a piece of graph paper with like a bar chart on it. And now imagine that you've got a bar on that bar chart that goes all the way up to the top of the paper and then goes off the paper. You don't get to know how tall that bar is. That's what clipping is. And we don't like clipping. Clipping is a bad thing. As somebody who creates a lot of video and audio content, I'm always trying to avoid clipping. Uh, but that's what sRGB is. Then the last one that we have is boosted which emulates a wider gamut display appearance, which does result in better uh, vibrance, but you may end up with some clipping, basically meaning that your gradients won't be as smooth. So that's just something to keep in mind. Let's see what they look like when I switch between them. So here's uh, native. Oh, okay, I didn't realize that. That was going to, maybe it's easier to do it like this. Yeah, there we go. So here's native, and now I'm going to bring it up to sRGB. And now I'm going to bring it up to boosted. Now, as I slide this, I do see the colors change, especially in that pink right there. All right, down in the native, it's very kind of washed out. I never would have noticed that it was washed out until I hit that boosted level. Uh, so I guess this is def definitely gonna be something where you adjust it to your personal uh, preference, but I love that this is in here. Now, over on this side, we have color temperature. Now on the color temperature side, uh, we have this weird rating of 10,000 K. That's 10,000 Kelvin. And my science teacher stuff is about to come out in, in my video nerd stuff is about to come out here. Because remember earlier when I was talking about my camera and I told you it's white balance was set to 5,400 Kelvin. Well, guess what? That's this right here. It has to do with the color of the sun and daylight is about 5,600 Kelvin. And I have two lights here in this room, both set to 5,600 Kelvin. Now, if we look right here, we have 10,000 Kelvin as our color temperature, which is very much on the blue side. Everything that is over on this side is very blue. Everything over on this side on the right is very, very red. I'm going to go through and just show you all of the different colors and note that because my camera is set to 50, uh, 5400 Kelvin, uh, this is going to be very, very similar to what it looks like when you look at it in your house, as long as YouTube doesn't just crush everything. But let's take a look. Uh, so here we are at four Kelvin. And as I increase it, that's 5500 Kelvin, which is very, very close to what my camera set at. And now as I keep going up, we can see how the color changes. Now, I gotta admit, I kinda prefer it 
over on the right hand side. I think it looks better, but which color temperature do you like the most? I think that I'm just gonna hit X. They have the default at 7,500 Kelvin. I think I'm gonna crank that up a little bit to 10,000 Kelvin. I think that that looks really, really nice to my eyes. That's just a personal preference. Next up, if you're hooking up your Steam Deck to an external display, you now have the ability to enable both HDR, which is high dynamic range, and VRR, which is a variable refresh rate, if you have the right equipment to go with that. Under your display settings, you can see new HDR settings down here under advanced. You have uh, enable HDR heat map, as well as your SDR content brightness on HDR. Now, if you don't know what that means, basically uh, what happens is if you're playing SDR content on an HDR display and you have HDR turned on, you're going to want to uh, adjust your H SDR content brightness to be whatever it is that you prefer. Then for VRR, we've got that underneath the quick access menu. So if I go into the quick access menu and I go down to the battery and drop down to here, you can see where you can turn on VRR and it'll tell you if the display has variable refresh rate right there so you don't have to worry about turning it on when it's not supported. Since we're in the quick access menu right here, we also uh, can look at the reworked quick access scaling settings to separate scaling from filtering. They've also added stretch and zoom scaling as new options to handle different aspect ratios. So they've, uh, if I go down here to scaling mode, they've now separated scaling mode and scaling filter, and they've added in stretch. Now they said they also added in zoom, but I don't see that in there. And it makes me wonder if stretch and zoom is just labeled as stretch and that's just one thing and not two things. Let me know in the comments down below if you know more about that stuff. Most of the time I find it's best to just use integer scaling because it gives you a better, um, what's the word, a, a, a better result anyway. They also said that compositing is now avoided in additional scenarios, reducing latency and stutter in situations with multiple overlays on screen. I've run into this before where I'm playing a game and I've got my, um, you know, I bring up this thing and I get a little bit of stuttering when I bring up the quick access menu. I'm not sure if that's what they're referring to here, but if it is and we have less stuttering there, then hooray for us. Moving on to the general tab, under there we have external storage devices are now auto-mounted when connected to the Steam Deck. To format or manage storage devices, use the new device manage interface in settings storage. So real quick, I'm gonna go into settings and storage. If I come down here, settings, and storage. Now, right now you can see that I have my micro SD card. I have an another micro SD card. Why do I have two micro SD cards in there? Um, that's weird because I only have one. I'm not sure what that means. And then I also have my internal drive. Well, let's say that you have a dock like this one that I have from JSOX that has an M.2 drive in it. This drive, when I first got it, I had to like run some stuff, some software from JSOX in order to get my Steam Deck to recognize this drive externally. I'm not going to have to do that anymore, but I also wonder if I'm going to have to do an update in order to get rid of that script that recognized and auto-mounted this drive every single time I docked my Steam Deck. Uh, if I do have to do that, I will let you know in the comments down below that like button. I'm gonna reach out to JSOX and ask them about that. Uh, but if you have a dock like this, then you're no longer going to have to do that stuff because it's just going to auto mount. And if you want to pick up a drive like this, I will leave a link in the description down below where you can pick one of these things up yourself. They've also updated some graphics drivers with a whole bunch of performance and functionality improvements and they have improved performance for Starfield. I, I just gotta say, I was right. I hate to be a guy that gloats, but I posted a video a while back where I talked about the fact that Starfield was going to get improvements over time because, hey, it's a big game and we've seen Valve step in to make big games work better on the Steam Deck in the past. Hello, Elden Ring. Well, now they're doing the same thing for Starfield because, hey, they want people to be happy playing their games on these systems. So they're gonna do everything that they can to help these big games run really well on the Steam Deck. Now this one I highlighted because it is very exciting to me and you wouldn't think that it would be, but slightly improved sleep resume speed. 
I cannot tell you how many times that my Steam Deck is sleeping for one reason or another, and I go to turn it on, and I hit the button, and I hear the bloop, but then my screen just stays black for a minute, and so I'm not sure what's happening. So then I hit the button again, and I hear a bloop again, and then I wonder, did I just turn it off? Or did I just turn it on? And then after three or four tries like that, the screen wakes up and it starts doing its thing. Hopefully that is behind us because it has always kind of driven me batty. Now, next up, I cannot wait to see what all of you in the wider Steam Deck community are able to do with this. We're now going to be able to customize our performance overlays. The contents of the performance overlay can now be customized by creating a preset configuration file. If you don't know what the performance overlay is, it's this thing right at the top of my Vampire Survivors game right here. It tells me a bunch of information about as, as to how well the Steam Deck is running at this point. And one of the things that I've always wanted is the ability to customize it so I only see the information that I care about. Like one thing that I would always want on mine is the battery. And speaking of batteries, I should plug mine in while I'm doing this. This is my bag from TomTok. It's what I usually carry my Steam Deck around in. And I always, always, always leave my battery in here. This is a battery. Uh, from uh, Basus, and it is a 20,000 milliamp hour battery. I use it to charge my phone all the time, my iPad, and I use it to keep my Steam Deck charged while I'm doing stuff. So I'm just going to plug it in right now so that I don't have to worry about the Steam Deck dying while I'm recording this video. So uh, link in the description down below if you want to check that out. Next up, we've got new firmware. And there's something in here that I was very confused by. They said that they've added voltage offset settings. Now, I looked all through the Steam Deck and I couldn't find where that is. And I wasn't even sure what voltage offset settings was. So I asked my friend Kyle, aka Cryobyte33, who if you have not yet subscribed to, subscribe to that man. And he said this, yeah, you have to use smokeless UMAF to do that. Assuming that someone is asking for negative voltage offset, that's undervolting. To which I replied, can you explain that to me like I am Bill the idiot that I am because I have no clue what you mean. Here's what he said. It delivers less voltage to the CPU, GPU, or system on a chip. Basically, depending on your specific silicon, it will consume less power to do the same work that leads to longer battery life, cooler temperatures, and theoretically could allow for higher performance if you have a good chip. If you want to know more about undervolting and overclocking your Steam Deck, he has a fantastic video, which I will link down below that you can check out at the end of this one. And lastly, SteamOS 3.5 brings with it an update to Ar the Arch Linux base. Most notably, it includes recent changes to KDE Plasma, which is Steam Deck's desktop mode. Now, I don't do a whole lot in Steam Deck desktop mode, so I don't feel like I have enough information that I can tell you all about that here. And what I'm going to recommend instead is that you check out people like Gaming on Linux, for that kind of information or more technical channels because really this channel is more about like what's it feel like what's it play like what do i like and what do i don't like and a whole lot less benchmarky stuff but what do you all think are you going to be updating to steam os 3.5 now that it's on the beta candidate channel or are you going to wait until it moves to beta or are you going to wait until it goes all the way to stable let me know in the comment section down below that like button and if you enjoyed this video you're probably going to enjoy this one right here from the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Stay rad, everybody.